long time friends, friends for nine years, grew up together in Brooklyn public housing. Two girls known in the neighborhood as twins because of living inside each other's house and being besties. When you saw one, you saw the other. The girls were the same age, 15 years old, when their friendship began. Their cute names, Debbie and Dee Dee, made them a match. While they had so much in common, they were at the same time very different. In fact, they were opposite, opposite twins. Debbie loved to study while Dee Dee loved to party. Even still, they remained friends. Only one thing was able to break them apart. Old fashioned kind of girl. I'm still that old fashioned kind of girl. I still feel girls should wear curls. I still think summer should be long. I still think you should cover that thong. Pants should be pulled up. Vicious gangs shouldn't exist. I mean, am I crazy? Is there something I miss? I still believe in home cooked meals. I still feel on Sundays we should rep them heels. I still believe in the husband and the wife. I still feel kids should be tucked in at night. Whatever happened to the switch and the rod? And since when we stopped cooking chicken with lard? <laughs> I love back in the day, you know, the press and the curls. I still believe in an old fashioned world, candy stores and, and parks and double dutch ropes. Good old fashioned neighborhoods like Fort Greene and, and Park Slope. Remember the neighbors who said, good morning to you. And the days when what you wear didn't have to be new, the, the Kojak, the soap opera kind of days, the days when friends would just stop by for some spades. The teacher played their part not different from your parents. And the crimes that were committed were much more transparent. Yeah, them days, them old fashioned days. I had no choice but to change with this world. But I sure miss being an old fashioned kind of girl. No, mom, I am not going to ask Dee Dee that. I don't believe that for one second. That's just based on some gossip you heard. Ma, I really, I don't even want to talk more about it. That's exactly how our friendship went on track 15 years ago. It started over some gossip. And now when we're finally trying to mend things, here comes the gossip again? Ma, that don't make any sense. Dee Dee was married all through that time. I know she was married three times, but she still was married. And my point is she moved on and so did James. James was married to Sheila for nine years. Ma, I told you what James told me. He said that breakup was not because of some other woman, it was because of Sheila. All right, Ma, look, that's, that's not even how you raised me. What about second chances? Forgiveness? Look, Ma, Dee Dee will be here in a few minutes, okay? Can I call you back later? Ma, I'll call you back later, okay? All right, Ma, bye, bye, bye. I don't believe it. People are still talking about the past, feeding their imagination with this 15-year-old affair. Both James and Dee Dee were married to people all through that time. And Mom, she's caught up in it too. Hate to say, old woman with nothing better to do. Don't believe him, it ain't nothing but the hen's nest. Be careful about that old hen's nest. It'll get you caught up in a whole lot of mess. The scene can be awful when the hens start talking. You'll be out on a limb and counting your losses. Here's a hand on how it start. The hens come together in a cluck and start. He said this and she said that. But when the hens start talking, there's never no facts. They'll talk about me and talk about you. They'll talk about the old and talk about the new. They'll talk in your face and behind your back. 
They talk a bunch of garbage and they never use tact. You wonder how the clucking even started to begin, but remember with the hens, you never can win. You gotta cover your ears and close your eyes, but beware, hens come in disguise. If you don't chime in, all kinds of you might pass a test. Just stay away from that old hen's nest. I don't care what they say. I know one thing for sure. I am not going back. And I definitely don't want to live the past. You know, all these years have just hung over me like a dark cloud. Everybody thinks they know everything, you know? Everybody knows what James and Dee Dee did, but uh, no one knows what I did. Not even Mom. And I know that's why they're back in my life, because I need to forgive them so that I can finally forgive myself. And that's what I want. I want forgiveness. Not necessarily for them, but for me, so that I can be rid of this feeling. You know, since I made up with James, I felt better. And I know when I lend my hand to Dee Dee, that I'll be okay, that I'll be at peace. Hi. Hi. Oh my goodness. Hi. Good to see you. Get you in here. Too. Oh my gosh. Come on, get in here, get in oh here. Oh my goodness. Have a seat, have a seat. Oh my goodness, Debbie. The place is amazing. I love the colors. Thank you, no. So bright. Thank you, girl. You know me. I always love my pastel. Yes. Some pink with a touch of yellow. <laughs> But have a seat, girl. Have a seat. Okay. I'm so glad you're here. Can I get you something to drink? Some water, some juice? No. I even got your favorite cookie. Oh, no. <laughs> no, actually, I just had something, so I'm okay for now, but maybe later. Okay, okay. I can't believe you're here. Oh, I know. Look at you. You look so good. You haven't even changed a bit. Oh, I'm serious, girl. <laughs> and look, I want you to tell me everything that's been happening, and I want you... Tell me everything, and don't you leave one thing out. I mean, not one bit. Mm -mm, me? No, 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 no. I may not have much to tell. I want to hear all about you. It looks like you and James are doing quite well for yourselves. I guess being the CEO of Black Phones R Us is really paying off, huh? <laughs> you know about that? You know about James's company? Um, sorry, Debbie, I didn't mean to blurt that out, but... You know how it is in the old neighborhood, whether you're doing good or you're doing bad. Everybody knows about it. You know how it is. I guess, I guess. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you probably forgot all about us in the old neighborhood, huh? You got away and you stayed away. <laughs> I didn't even know that um, you and James had even stayed in touch. Well, I guess we did. But you know what? Actually, we didn't get, it's been like just not too long ago, maybe like, what, three years now? You know, everything just naturally fell back into place, so we went ahead and got married. We figured we had already wasted enough time. Well, he's always loved you anyway. Even the whole time he was with Sheila, it was you he really wanted. Oh, you know? stop. You say that with such conviction. Like, you really know what you're talking about? But uh, you know about James and Sheila's relationship? Like, how much did you and James stay in touch? <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't say we stayed in touch, mm. you know. I think we, we ran into each other a couple times, <laughs> spoke a little here and there, bits and pieces though, nothing too heavy, you know. But he always carried that torch for you. I could tell. Anyway, I must have been right. <laughs> you and James are married. And I am so sorry that I wasn't at your wedding. I know how important it was for you. I mean, it was something we always talked about ever since we were little. Of all the, you know, of how things went and how everything went down, I, I regret missing that day the most. I mean, I know how important it was for you. Debbie, can you ever forgive me? Well, you know, married we are. And I think, you know, it was just meant to be. I think I think I loved him all these years. Mm -hmm. And Didi, you know what? I forgive you too. We were young back then. We said and we did things that we shouldn't have. You know, but I think that's why I'm so glad that you're here because I think it's just time for us just just to move forward. I appreciate that. I do, but before we can move forward, I have no I need to tell you that I am sorry. You said that. Just, just let me finish. Okay. I hurt you. And you had every right to be angry, 
to end the friendship. I mean, I betrayed you. What happened was my fault. It's just that I was afraid and insecure. Tabby, you were always so strong. I just knew that you were destined to, to succeed in life and I was jealous, afraid that I'd be left behind. I let my fears control me and I hurt you because of them. You? You jealous? Girl, you was the one that always had your mind on right. You knew what you wanted. You, 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 you were destined to succeed, smiling at all your pictures. I mean, how could you, you, you be jealous? Not you. Yes, Debbie, the Dee Dee everyone didn't see. Hmm. The girl who on the inside was afraid and depressed. The girl who was insecure, the girl who had anxieties that she didn't share with the world. I mean, even as I put my best foot forward, presented my best face to the world, all made up, even as I wore my, my designer clothes and my shoes and, you know, of course, my bags. <laughs> what you didn't know is that sometimes I felt like nothing. I mean, yeah, on the outside, everything seemed great. I always had a date for Friday night. But on the inside, only I knew the pain that I learned to mask so well. Only I knew that sometimes I just wanna. I just wanna moan. Yup all my emotions bellow and grow. Stir my feelings, throw them in a pot. Stomp out the pressure and make the madness stop. Scream out the words, clear my mind. leave them behind. <sighs> close my eyes, throw my hands up, wrap up anxiety and close the door shut. And when I finish, throw my Kleenex away and dig deep, deep down for my strength to face a new day. Girl, those were my emotions. Those were my feelings. How could they be yours? You look like you had it all. But Debbie, that's the same thing I said about you. How could you have had those emotions? I mean, you did everything right. You were the stay in the books one, take your time one, <laughs> budget your money one, <laughs> stay at home one. All I did was envy you. Girl, you, you had it all. You did everything right. <laughs> yeah, I had it all. I had it right all right. That's because you didn't know what I was going through. Hmm. You didn't know that I was afraid. I was afraid that I too would be left behind. Hmm. You don't know how much I wanted just all the guys that like you just to like me for one day. You don't know the fear that I had. You don't know um, that I just wanted just, just, just for them just to like me just for one day. Hmm. You don't know what I wrote in my diary, girl. I wrote about F-E-A-R. I had so much of it to one day I stood up and I said, Fear, just leave me alone. All you want to do is bring me down, down, down. Disseminate my inner strength. Make me feel I'm not worth it. Isolate and captivate my mind you try to deactivate. But I see you, trying to creep up beside me and whisper in my ear, trying to disguise yourself, trying to make me fear. Don't you know? Haven't you heard? I'm stronger than that. Your tactic, absurd. It's like old politics, the strong versus the weak. The struggle with fear, I'm destined to defeat. I won't be broken. 
I believe in myself. If I succumb to fear, what else will be left? My generations, I see from afar. For all of them, I must set the bar. So listen up, fear. Just leave me alone. I'm destined for success. It's deep in my bones. So take your negative and your misleading tone and fear, oh fear, just leave me alone. Girl, that is awesome. The way you took that monster on, cause that's exactly what it is, right? It's the fear monster. It's crazy that we both had the same fear and, and neither one of us knew what the other one was going through. But that's, that's amazing how you, how you uh, slayed that dragon. I think I need to write those words down and say them and write them daily myself. I just, I just didn't think, I mean, you were always so strong. You seem strong too. I guess we both were just good at hiding. <laughs> I guess we were. You know, what if I told you that I started seeing her in a whole different light? Hmm. Yeah. I woke up one day and finding a bottle to escape in started to seem desirable, even pleasurable. Me, mm. the strong one, the invincible one. All of a sudden, I was one. I was in sync with the whiskey woman. What if I were her? Yeah, the whiskey woman. The woman with the built-in shot glass. The one with the chaser in the cup. I would turn up that bottle of Jack Daniels, that is. <laughs> Burping and slurping my way through life. Living in the peapot of the local drunk saying hi to everyone who walked past me. They know me and I know them. <laughs> I'm the neighborhood whiskey woman. Street knowledge certified. Bloodshot eyes and a liver full of holes. <laughs> but I got a heart of gold. Wouldn't hurt a fly. I drink whiskey till the day I die. You wanna be me, but you can't. You got too much pride to live life outside. Shame written on your shoulder. Your mama probably told you, don't be like the whiskey woman. Keep your business out the street. Act decently. After all, you is a lady. But mama, what's that smell? Is what you would yell? As mama took a swig and hit it under her wig and said, child, that's my medicine. Hard to cope. Your daddy ain't no joke. The way he cheats on me with the lady up the street, this is my feel good juice makes me feel loose, like I can glide through life, hide behind the pain, erase all the shame. Mama, you's a whiskey woman. It makes no difference which way the bottle spent. You got the same dress, just can't confess. Yours is in the dark, hers is in the light. You drink early, she drink at night. Pointed fingers, but some pointed back at you. Mama, is this what you do? You're no better than a chick who hang with five men. Y'all both need hope. A way to cope from that whiskey. Evidently, with each swallow, there's maxed pain, but it all remains the same. There's no difference in time spent. Yes, fingers pointed back at you, judging the things you do. The whiskey woman, 
the inner blueprint, the sins we commit, the mirror we see when our hearts start to bleed, the whiskey woman, our personal checkpoint. Judge not, judge not the image on the outside if it's the image on the inside. Reflect and check what you do. The whiskey woman could be you. Wow. That's heavy, Debbie. What can I say? I mean, what can I say? It sounds like you were in a really dark place. Who helped you? How, how did you get back, Debbie? How did you get better? That's just it, girl. I'm just so grateful that I even knew my way back. I, I went back to that one that could help me. Mm. I went back, I got back at the 11th hour. Mm. The 11th hour. No such thing. No help will come before the bell ring. No more tricks to pull from a hat. Everything is doomed and that's a fact. The 11th hour. All hope is gone. The fat lady has started to sing her song. Lights have dimmed. Curtain called. No one standing tall. Until on my knees I decided to fall. And on God's name, I decided to call. I called for love, help, and support. I returned to the things I was taught. I cried out loud, having almost lost it all. On my knees, my heart crawled. Didi, that's where my help came from. Yeah, that was always you. <laughs> you was always talking about God and scriptures. You know that was never me. My top concern was, do I look good? <laughs> and where's the party happening? <laughs> but that was always you. I'm glad you got back. <sighs> you know what, though? Um, when me and my third husband started having problems, I started thinking about some of the things that you used to tell me. You did? I did. I mean, I thought about what was going on between Keith and I. And then I started thinking about the world in general. I mean, it all hit me. Hmm. It all just hit me all at once. And I mean, I laid across my bed and I let out the worst cry I had ever cried. I mean, I cried. I cried because things ain't right. Righteousness and fairness seem so out of sight. Tax and price are just too darn high. Work conditions are ride or die. Recognition come at a cost. Marriage is a myth and truth is divorce. Murders get the trial for the death of Trayvon. <laughs> it doesn't matter if you're right or you're wrong. Those just the who you work the hardest for, and evil is the face that settles the score. A bucket is not enough to carry all these tears. Safety don't exist for the carrier of fears. The weight on your shoulder weighs you down. You try to smile, but revert to a frown. I cried on my pillow the other night because things just ain't right. 
it wasn't the van girl crying because she didn't get her way. This time it was different. I was changing. It was like I was growing up. I came up from those tears a brand new person. <sighs> I understand. I understand. Whew. But listen, <laughs> it's getting late and I am, I'm sure James is probably on his, on his way home now, right? I, I know he is not ready for me in his house. So I'm going to get going, okay? No, girl, please, he'll be fine. You know what? If you wait a few minutes, yeah. he'll actually be walking through that door. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, no, and I'll fix us all something. No, it's okay. I actually have a meeting I have to get to, okay. but I'll see you, okay? Okay. All righty. Bye. 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 No, Mom. Everything went just fine. No, she's not here. She's, she had an appointment to get to. Once again, Mom. No. It had nothing to do with that. Mom, look, I have no reason. Look, I've forgiven James. I have no reason not to forgive Dee Dee. Look, Mom, can we talk about something else? How was your day? Did you go shopping? Did you catch any good sales? And what's been happening with your favorite TV program? Glamour Grannies. Did Amy leave Blake for Boston? And what's happening with Taja, Ma? Did she go on an excursion with Leroy? I need an update, Ma. <laughs> Girl, I am so glad that you were able to come back. You know, yeah. my schedule has been so hectic these past few weeks. But I am so glad. I meant to have you here sooner, actually. Oh, no, it's okay. I know life gets hectic. I understand. It's been busy for me, too. But you know what I was thinking? Hmm. The next time we go out, I want to take you out. I mean, there's this restaurant that I used to go to. They play jazz. So nice. The food is amazing. Hmm. You will love it. Seriously, tab is on me. I got a running tab there. You can order whatever you want. You think you're going to come? Girl, just... Please, just say the word. You know, I ain't never been one to turn down a dinner. Yeah. A free dinner at that. <laughs> true, true. But you know what, girl? I could not stop thinking about what we talked about last time. Yeah. I mean, we went somewhere. We done turned into some grown folks. Mm-hmm. I thought the same thing. <laughs> I remember when our deepest conversation used to be about where we going, mm -hmm. what we doing, mm -hmm. and what pocketbook you wearing. Oh, so <laughs> You know, I was a mess with them pocketbooks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, man. Girl, you love those pocketbooks so much. I, mean, I think you had, but what, about 300 of them? And I think you love those pocketbooks more than you love your first husband. Mm, yeah. And don't ask to borrow one, because that wasn't going to happen. <laughs> and I hated, I hated waiting for you, because you could never decide which pocketbook to take. You know you ain't right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you are right. Mm -hmm. I was a mess with them pocketbooks. <sighs> I think I had the pocketbook blues. <laughs> I got the pocketbook blues. Hm. I don't know which one to choose. The long one that hang, or the short one that strut, or the deep one that keeps all of my stuff. The stylish one that bedazzle and match my shoes, or the one that carry all my jewels. Hmm. Do I need the one with the other ID, or carry the one that tells all about me? The one with the slight rough edges, the one that can Catch me when I fall with my wedges. The one with the color that match the wood or the one on my back that makes me look taller. The one that make me look a little presidential. Or the one on my back that make me <laughs> feel mental. The one that slightly hangs off my waist. That's the one that has that trendy type of taste. Maybe I'll choose the blue orange or yellow or I might just choose the ones that make me feel mellow <laughs> dumb blues dumb blues being a woman is rough and cruel if I didn't have to choose I wouldn't have the blues but I better choose a pocketbook and choose one fast whatever one I choose girl <laughs> better have some cash girl those were the days I wish to go styling with a pocketbook full of cash. <laughs> it was, but as I recall, <laughs> you had some aspirations for some cash as well. <laughs> Remember the time you thought you had mail? 
girl, please. I would, how could I forget that? Why are you going to bring that up? I was just so <laughs> pathetic. I just, I was just waiting for that check in the mail. Money mail, you can never tell. It's a tickle in my bones. A wiggle in my tail. I think I'm about to get something delivered in the mail. I see the postal man coming with his big blue postal sack. And from the way I see it, that sack he got is packed. I grabbed my keys from the table and with them in my hand, down the stairs I went to the mailbox is where I ran. Anxious and excited, I knew it had to be a check in the mail. So I waited patiently. A dream cloud overhead of those new shoes I now can buy. It might be enough for a new hairdo and a new dye. I'll stretch a couple dollars for a brand new pocketbook. I'll even buy some groceries. Oh yeah, I love to cook. Maybe in the envelopes of checks, there may be two. Just enough money for me and even you. Out to dinner, I'll splurge and spend it all on myself. Call my travel agent and pay for a one week cruise. Call my boss to take the day so the mail I can peruse. My dreams getting bigger and that money is gonna make me rich. I'll be sitting pretty and my neighbors will still be broke. Some may ask to borrow and I just might tell them, no. As my dreams got even bigger and that money seems so real, I ripped open the envelope and I found it was a bill. <laughs> Timmy, oh. I'm sorry, but when you told me that story, I laughed so hard. I mean, I was literally on the floor rolling, <laughs> laughing. <laughs> and the thing is, every time I thought about it, I just started laughing all over again. It was, it was so funny. Yeah, you know what? I, I started laughing myself. Well, you know, I got over it after a while, I realized I wasn't gonna get that money to check, and I got myself together. But you know what? Let me tell you what was even funnier than that. I don't know who anything that could oh, have been funnier well, than that. You remember the time that we actually had saved our money? We uh -huh. were going on this big girl excursion weekend. We had finally saved our money, uh -huh. but you had to get the day off. Oh. And you had to go to your <laughs> boss, and he denied you. I think uh, you came up with all kinds of stories. I, I think you even came up with some kids that you didn't have, and they even got sick, right? Mm -hmm. I think one of them had the flu or something. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> Please, girl, tell me, tell me again. I want to know, how did that story go? You was like, wait a minute, you was like, oh, uh, Mr. Hansen, can I speak to you for a moment, Mr. Hansen? Oh, please, Mr. Hansen. Please, please, tell me, how did that go again? Please, come on, tell me. Debbie, you know you're not a nice person. <laughs> but, okay, all right, wait, here it goes, here it All goes. Right. All right, here it goes. Mr. Hansen. Mr. Hansen, can I speak to you for a minute? I'm going through some family issues and I'm gonna need a couple of days off. Well, I know the project has to be done. I know about the deadlines and the board meetings and yes, 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 I know we're up for audit and I know how important the merger is. But Mr. Hansen, Mr. Hansen, I got some family issues. Emergencies at home, a five month old I can't leave alone. I got some appointments to make, see my child's school. I need a day off, can you bend the rules? Mr. Hansen. I just need a couple of days. It's something that just can't be delayed. You said submit my request and you deny it anyway that I asked this request just the wrong day? Mr. Hansen, I thought I was a valuable worker. You denying my request because of a merger for the health of your workers? Where's the quality care? Deny my request, you wouldn't dare. You did. You denied it without reason, accused me of treason, made me face probation and stiff stipulation, which turned into termination? Mr. Hansen, 
Maya's meant nothing to you? You replace me so quickly and fill my shoes? <laughs> now I'm on the unemployment line singing the blues. I'm just a number waiting to be called. <laughs> I remember when I used to walk your halls. Mr. Hanson, good old Mr. Hanson. <laughs> I couldn't believe him. That old rascal denied my time off. <laughs> he sure did. But what was even more crazy was the story you told him. <laughs> Man, I couldn't believe it. But you know what? We were on that trip any old way. Mm -hmm. We didn't care and we had fun. Mm -hmm. You didn't have a job when you came back, but we went anyway. Mm. <laughs> we sure did. Girl. And we had a good time, right? Of course we did. We I always. Mean, we just had fun. I don't regret going. I don't mean Mr. Hanson. <laughs> mm-hmm. Don't mean Mr. Hanson. Do you know what, girl? I felt bad about your job when I think about it. <laughs> no. When I came back, you didn't have your job, but okay. you said you didn't care. Mm -mm. <laughs> we went on that trip anyway, and we had so much fun. But you know what? We always have so much fun. We laugh about the most silliest things. Everything make us laugh. Mm -hmm. Do you remember my Aunt Nita? Um, Aunt Nita, who lived in the projects, said she wasn't leaving till they carry her out in the pine box. Yes, <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. she used to crack us up. Oh, I'll man. never forget Aunt Nita. She was so funny. I'm a project chick and I'm loving it. Cheap rent, no light, no gas, and a lease that lasts, lasts, lasts. From generations to generations, everybody got a place to stay. Hey, hey, I got a room for you, and you, and you, and I got a room for you. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, my abode is stigmatized. At least that's from outside eyes. They look down on me because of what they see. Stink hallways, elevators filled with pee. <laughs> yeah, you try to get through the door, but so does the junkie. Young kids run amok. No education, they stuck in a funk. Rats run free. Hardly see the maintenance man. I can't tell you any last job by. Water drips in my eye from a ceiling that's broke. My kitchen sink sits on a slope. Mold and mildew take over my bathroom. <laughs> Most of my neighbors live in doom. Some cry out for change. Some just move and run away. But I'm a project chicken. I'm here to stay. Why? 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 Why do I sound crazy? Desire to live my days in squalor? Why not joy to cry and bellow louder? Because despite my circumstances, I choose to see things in a positive view. It's not how you live. It's what you do. So I'll take out my garbage, I'll clean all around me. Mm -hmm. This is where I live. This is what surrounds me. I'll walk like I'm rich. Not that I'm any better, but I just weather the storm in any kind of weather. Through the drugs and the gunshots and the ghettoized living. I'm a project chick, but baby, I'm driven. So if this is the place that I pay my money for rent, the money that I have will be well spent. I'll buy nice furniture. I'll fix up my place. I'll dress real nice and uh, fix up my face, <laughs> walk through the door like George, walk with Wheezy. <laughs> yeah, the projects might be hard, but baby, I'ma make it easy. Cobs down one way, condos down the other. But I wouldn't change my place, I wouldn't even bother. I love the amenities, girl, it's good for the price you get. That's why I'm happy, I'm a happy project chick. <laughs> <laughs> Man, she was just too much. I know. Oh my I goodness. My she sure Nita. was. She sure was, right? She stayed on us. She was always on point. Yes. Had us crack up. Like she would tell you about yourself in a minute. Mm -hmm. Oh man. Debbie, I I'm so glad that we got back together. It's been really good just to be able to to talk about old times, to get together. I mean, I have I've really, really missed this, our friendship. I can't believe we got off track. I mean, it all started. I know, I know, it all started over the hen's nest. Be careful about that old hen's nest. It'll get you caught up in a whole lot of mess. The scene can be awful when the hens start talking. You'll be out on the limb and counting your losses. Here's a hint on how it starts. <laughs> the hens come together and the clucking starts. He said this and she said that. But when the hens start talking, there's never no facts. They'll talk about me and they talk about you. They talk about the old and they talk about the new. They talk in your face and they talk behind your back. They talk a bunch of garbage and they never use tact. You wonder how the clack and even started to begin. But remember with the hens, you can never win. You gotta cover your ears and close your eyes. <laughs> but beware, hens come in disguise. If you don't chime in, all kinds of you might pass the test. Just stay away 
from that old hen's nest. <laughs> yeah, girl, we got tangled up. We sure did. But that was then and this is now. Mm -hmm. We're older and we're wiser. We're better and we're back together. And it's real good, girl. It's, it's real good. It is. Do you know what? If I don't get this dinner started, James will be walking in this door. And I don't think he'll be too happy. <laughs> so I'm going to get that started. You going to help me out? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> All right, then. So we'll get All together right. sometime soon. All right. All righty. Right. I'll see you. Bye, bestie. Bye. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. <gasps> Hey, baby, your dinner's ready. I got your favorite. Honey, how was your day? Oh, so you got the client? I knew you would. I knew you would. You told me he was tough, but you got him. Honey, I am so proud of you. Mm. Oh, how was my day? It was good. I finished up early, so Dee Dee came over, and she came by the house this afternoon. You know, we're really starting to mend things. We're getting back, you know, like old times. I was thinking that maybe, you know, all of us can get together soon, maybe, and have dinner. In fact, she invited me out, so I was thinking that maybe all of us could... Honey, I don't understand it. Why every time I mention Dee Dee, you start going silent on me? Like, it's like you're holding on to something. What is it? James, honey, what do you mean you don't want me hanging with Dee Dee? Huh? Wait, wait a minute. First of all, we're not hanging, okay? We're talking. We're just talking. We're friends, and we go way back. And we start to rekindle our friendship. Oh, no, but I do want to be friends with her again. You know, actually, these past few weeks have shown me how much I really miss our friendship. James, you're not making any sense. Well, what things? I don't know. Well, then tell me. Baby, talk to me. James, why are you getting so upset? And why are you yelling? James, what is it? And where are you going? James, tell me. Talk to me, baby. I don't believe it. He just walked out. Hello? Ma, no, no, no. Actually, right now is not a good time. No, me and James just had an argument. No, he's not here. He went out. Well, actually, it was. But what made you say that? What do you, th you think? They were into what? He was on what? For how long? Oh my goodness, Ma. This is just too much. So you're saying that they were together until he started seeing me? And she's trying to what? All right, all right. Yes, Ma. Yes, yes, I do believe you. I do. I just need a moment. I need a moment to process all of this. Yes, I'll, I'll be fine. I'll be fine, Ma. Listen, listen, I'll call you tomorrow. Yes, Ma, I'm going to be okay. I just need some time just to think all of this through. Yes, Mom, I'll call you tomorrow. Okay, Mom, good night, good night. Ma, I love you. Okay, bye, Ma. So let me get this right. Both James and Dee Dee were involved in doing, okay, 12 years? Oh boy, and I was the one that was worried about what I did? Well, let me, look, okay, look, I'm back. So while I'm trying to mend things with Dee Dee, and I'm thinking they were doing really great, that we're friends again, all the while it's my man you want? You using me? You playing me? You pretending? Really? Is she for real? Ain't this some mess? Well, you know what, Dee Dee? I got something for you, girl, because I ain't never going back. Yeah. First of all, he is my man. He's a good man. He's a hardworking man. And he's a strong man. And he's a successful man. He's sweet and he's loving to me. And most of all, girl, he is my man. And if you ever think we're going backward, then you're crazy because we ain't never going back there again. <laughs> but you know what? Now, girl, guess who's coming to dinner? Hello, Dee Dee? Yeah. How about that offer Friday night? Is this Friday too soon? 
Okay, great. What's the address? Perfect. Sounds fine to me. I'll see you then, Friday at 7. I got it. Okay? Yeah, mm hmm. Good night. Bye. Look like dinner is about to be served. You like it? It's nice, right? <laughs> Wait till you taste the food. My goodness. I'm excited. I can't wait. You want to order something? I mean, maybe a soda. I don't want to. No, no, I think I'm going to have me some wine. Well, all right now. <laughs> Sounds good. You letting your hair hang down tonight. OK. No, honey, it's coming way down tonight. I'm about to handle my business. You, you OK? You in a good mood? You know, why not? You know, after all, I got my man back, and I got my best friend back. What's the odds of that, you know? The three of us, you know, all getting together and everything. I think you just wanted to see my man, right? Girl, you know, you mean, you know, you're so fond of my James and all. I'm sure you'd like to get with him at least just for one night, right, girl? You sounding like you had some while before you got here. You okay? Oh, girl, why not? Like I said, I'm just, you know, I'm just missing him. I just wish he was here with us and all, you know. And you saying, oh, like, what? Wait a minute. That goes my James right there. Hey, babe. Oh, no, that's not him. Why are you acting so jittery? Oh, you might have thought I said I saw your man coming. Stop. <laughs> mm. I, wait a minute. That is my baby. Over here, James. Yes, baby. Hi. You know Dee Dee. Mm-hmm. Honey, yeah, I was just about to order us some uh, Ziffendale, some wine. Oh, tonight calls for champagne? <laughs> you right, baby. Um, yeah, on that note... Yeah, well, she was just about to leave. She has a whole tab for us and everything, but she's leaving. Yes, baby. Yes, she is. Uh-huh. So on that note, you can go ahead and say goodbye to Dee Dee. And that goes for me, too. Goodbye, Dee Dee. James. James. I love you, but I love you, too. I need you, but I need you too. I want you, but I want you too. There is not much left for me to do but to choose, but how do I choose when I love the two? Tell me, what or what should I do? Fear. Leave me alone. All you try to do is bring me down, down, down. Fear, leave me alone. All you want to do is bring me down, down, down. Disseminate my inner strength. Make me feel like I'm not worth it. Isolate and captivate. My mind, you try to deactivate. But I see you trying to creep up beside me and whisper in my ear, trying to discuss guise yourself trying to make me fear don't you know haven't you heard i'm stronger than that your tactic absurd it's like old politics the strong versus the weak the struggle with fear i'm destined to defeat i won't be broken i believe in myself if I succumb to fear, what else would I have left? For all my generations, I see from afar. For all of them, I must set the bar. So listen up, fear. Just leave me alone. I'm destined for success. It's deep in my bones. Take your negative and misleading tone and fear, oh fear, just Leave me alone. Old fashioned kind of girl. I'm just that old fashioned kind of girl. I believe girls should wear curls. I believe summer should be long. I think uh, you should cover that thong. Pants should be pulled up. And vicious gangs should not exist. I mean, am I crazy? Is this something that I miss? I believe in home cooked meals. 
And I believe on Sundays, you should rep those heels. I believe in the husband and in the wife. And I believe kids should be tucked in at night. But whatever happened to the switch and the rod? And since when did we stop cooking chicken with lard? I love back in the day, you know, the press and the curl. I believe in the old fashioned world, candy stores and parks and double dutch ropes and good old neighborhoods with like Fort Greene and Park Slope. You remember the neighbors that would say, good morning to you and what you wore? And it have to be new. The cold jack, the soap opera kind of days. The days when friends came by just to play some spades. Teachers play their part not different than parents. And crimes that were committed were much more transparent. Yeah, them days, them old fashioned kind of days. How I wish those days could be replayed. I had no choice but to change with this world, but I sure do miss being an old fashioned kind of girl. We hope you've enjoyed our presentation of Old Fashioned Girl. In the role of Dee Dee, Tasha Brumfield. In the role of Dee Dee Two, Joyce Dowling. In the role of Debbie, Cynthia Perkins, and in the role of Debbie too, Moniqua Peak. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Woo! Yeah!